Hello, everybody. I'm Mike. And I'm Maria. And this is Talk Alley. Hello, Mike. Hi, Maria. Last week, <laughs> uh, we were invited to uh, attend the Pakasa's uh, 22nd anniversary gala mm -hmm. yes. with, uh, uh, with them. And uh, Ibalik Ang Saya. Also, Ibalik Ang Saya. Yeah, get the yes. joy back or the um, hold the Spaß wieder zurück in Stuttgart, yeah, uh, the city of musicals. So it was very exciting. Yes, it was really fun. I love it. I enjoyed every minute of it there. So, Mike, yes. uh, before, of course, before we start uh, asking a question or mm -hmm. introducing our guests, let's watch the video. the goal of Pagasa for having this event tonight? Okay, so we have this gala every year and it gives a very, you know, community to get together in a way that we do it at home. Here in Germany, it's very rare that we have occasions where you dress up and, you know, Filipinos love to dress up. They love to dance and you can see, you know, Dr. Neumar, 
the Honorary Consul General. Yes, and this was the Pak Asa 22nd yeah, just, anniversary gala. Yes, that's right, Mike. And just for everyone to know that Pak Asa is the Philippine American German Association of the Stuttgart area. That's mm -hmm. where we attended the gala event. And this group hopes to provide a venue for the Filipino community in the Stuttgart area to connect mm -hmm. with uh, you know, other the Filipino American Germans yes. in, who are living and working there as well. Yes, I, I really enjoyed the uh, the event, especially when we danced the Cupid Shuffle yeah. uh, together. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Maria, uh, what's in store for us today? Oh, okay, Mike. So, 
we have a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> just just for for every to everyone to know for the benefit of uh we are going to talk about i'm so sorry <laughs> mike we are going to talk so about excited. the film a film that mm -hmm. focuses on migrants or ofws abroad mm -hmm. uh whose life has not been really talked about in the country mm -hmm. that that's the lgbtq specifically the lgbtq community so there that's one and also we will be joined by one of the men and women who are working hard in our philippine consulate general in frankfurt yes uh, that's right maria uh, we have ofws in germany as well and they have worked uh, hard and made sacrifices for all of us especially the frontliners uh, during the pandemic and our first guest um, is an indigenous uh, documentary filmmaker, human rights activist uh, from the Philippines. He's also a member of Phil Silat Association under Philippine Olympic Committee, Changemaker alumnus of Thomson Reuters Foundation, core member of Vote Pilipinas under the Philippine Commission on Election and advocacy specialist of Mujer, LGBT plus org. Welcome to talk Ali, Radim Musawa. Hello, Radim. Uh, I think oh, you're still on mute. You're still on mute. Okay. Hi everyone, Hi. greetings Hi. From, from New York and assalamu alaikum to everyone, especially mm -hmm. to alaikum Ali and Maria and Mike. Yeah. You, you know, Mike, when I first invited Duradin, he was um, in Europe during mm -hmm. those times. I think he was in Amsterdam. So I believe yesterday he flew to New York and woke up at 6 a.m. for us. Thank you so yes, much. For thank you for being time, with us Jeffrey. on the show. That's right. So. Yes. So and then uh, Maria joining us also today on Talk Ali is our consul Cecile Joyce Lau. She is the economic and consular. Uh, for the passport, civil registry, and uh, authentication. Uh, so if you have questions in mind for her, uh, please write uh, them down in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Talk Ali, Cecile. Hello. Magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon po, Consul Cecile Lau. And welcome to Talk Ali. Thank you. So, but before we begin asking our questions, Mike, this episode is supported by Amazing Pure Organic Barley, provides you with the stamina and vigor to survive long hours of work and play. For inquiries, please contact Miss Jess Eskilio. You may also email her at jess at eskilio.pe for more information. Yes. I am Maritoni Fernandez, and we are in the middle of a barley field here in Swan Hill, Australia. We think we have the best barley in the world because of our clean irrigation water. Water comes from the Murray River, which is a freshwater river. All our drinking water comes from the Murray River too. So it's full of nutrients and also the climate is perfect for growing winter cereals. Clean, green, certified organic. Yeah, we're certified with NASA, which is one of the Australian certifications for organic. IAM Worldwide gets its barley grass powders from Herbal, which sources them from us at Nutrigreen, so you're guaranteed the best barley grass powders in the world. I am truly proud to say that we are now the sole distributor in the Philippines for Nutrigreen barley. Amazing Pure Organic Barley provides you with stamina and vigor to survive long hours of work and play. For inquiries, please contact Miss Jess Esquilio. You may also email her at jess at esquilio.de for more information. Yes. So if you have uh, questions for Radim, uh, please write them in the comments section. And of course, you can now support our show by sending us stars. Also, please do follow our page. We also have an Instagram account, TikTok and YouTube channel. So you can watch more of the shows that you might have missed. Yeah. So, and uh, before we begin, let's watch this video, <laughs> video round today. <laughs> a big uh, ano, success, pero ang importante sana na is going to become a place for the Filipino uh, LGBTQI community in Amsterdam, especially, but 
everybody is welcome from other cities and countries to come over. They have a place to feel safe. Importante din yun eh. Ako, nung nag-apply ako ng naturalization, single naman ako. Wala akong party. Mm -hmm. Pero nung nag-Dutch card, single ako. You need to give up your Filipino party. Yes, yun yung pinarmahan ko dito sa Amsterdam. Mahirap naman talaga eh. Nagigising ka sa mga na hindi ka komportable. Yung parang napipilitan ka pumilos or gawa ng bagay na hindi naman naayon sa iyong pakiramdam. Wala naman nagsasabi sa iyo na ano na all the time, pero nararamdaman mo ibang tingin sa iyo. Going back to the Philippines was not really a choice for me because I couldn't live as a woman there. You were made to believe that it is wrong and it is a sin. But it seems like I'm forced to explain to these people why I live with a guy. And it's like, in the beginning maybe it's okay, but then after some time it's just a nuisance. At that time it was quite difficult because for me, I was denying to be gay. I, I was denying that uh, I'm So, um, first of all, I know you have been probably asked uh, this uh, many times now, but I do want to know uh, what inspired you to create the film Tulipa? Uh, you know, no, uh, I've, been, I've been doing equality and human rights and peace my movement and development program in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And as I journey to you know, helping out our fellow activists in the Philippines to pass, uh, hopefully, in the near future, uh, to lobby the uh, Soja Equality Bill, I just realized na we have forgotten, in the movement, equality movement, we have forgotten the biggest export of our country, which are our people. That's our biggest export. And rarely I hear stories and representation from the Filipino LGBT migrants from the diaspora from all over the world being included uh, on the talk about Soja Equality Bill. And you know, most of the members of the LG Filipino LGBT communities who moved outside the Philippines and, uh, and, and live in different countries, most of them actually left the country because of the inequality in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So why are we not giving them platform? And this is, it, this is why... Uh, we decided, uh, me and my team decided to create the documentary film Tulipa, which is only 30 minutes. But the purpose of the film is not really to uh, entertain, but to spark conversation, to spark awareness on what is it to be included in the movement. The topic of inclusion that nobody should be left behind when we talk about equality in the Philippines. So that's the reason for Okay. Um, Radim, uh, what does Tulipa mean? Oh, uh, uh, when we were making the film, we are uh, deciding ano yung best title that we should uh, create or uh, put up for the film. And, and I found out that, you know, Tulips is basically the national mm -hmm. brand of the Netherlands. Uh, mm -hmm. But in history, okay. Tulips is not originally from the Netherlands, but from Turkey, which is also part of Asia. And it was exported to the Netherlands, and Netherlands created an environment where tulips could grow, flourish, mm -hmm. blossom, and comes in different rainbow colors. And that I realized this is the story of our Filipino migrants, how they left the Philippines because they were not fertilized in the Philippines because of the inequality there, and they moved to the Netherlands and found 
a new place to call home, to flourish, to blossom. Now they were able to create, uh, now they were able to establish their life there and seeing them really trying to contribute back to the Philippines and making it sure that they are not sending, they are not just sending money back in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They try to influence their family that this is the environment that we need to create for us to come back home. So the longingness of being part of the Philippines again and coming back home is one of their uh uh that they're fighting for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um what did you do in order to understand the life of the LGBTQ immigrants uh, or FWs? Uh I think I think for the last 7 years I've been doing uh uh public diplomacy through uh through films. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the most important power on trying to uh, ed educate our fellow uh, Filipino communities all over the world when it comes to our his history, history of uh, Bangsamoro, of the Moro people, the indigenous people, issues on uh, exploitation of artifacts in the Cordillera. And I always meet a lot of members of the Filipino LGBT in the Philippines. And mm -hmm. I always hear this story over and over again. And every time we do our Senate hearing in, in the Senate in the Philippines, Along with our uh, along with our activists and also the champions for the Soji Bill, which are now at this Congress, which is Senator uh, Lauren Legarda and Senator Villar and Senator Risa Onteveros, and I and, and and I started to realize that we don't have voices from the diaspora, from the Filipino LGBT migrants, to really talk about this issue on why they really want to have the anti-discrimination bill in the Philippines, so they could feel empowered and safe to come back home because you know the soji equality bill has been already in the congress for almost two decades uh so, that's yeah 20 that's years. Right. Mm -hmm. uh and until now for some odd reason i think we are one of the country that doesn't really have a comprehensive anti-discrimination law we have anti-discrimination clauses in our constitution but mm -hmm. we don't have an anti-discrimination law stand alone mm. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It has been um, debated since uh, 2000, year 2000, the uh, anti-discrimination anti or SOGI mm -hmm. bill. So um, I'm also a member and advocate and ally in Iloilo. We have the Iloilo Pride team there. So right now we have our celebration and our Pride March. I'm really, I just want to greet the L uh, LGBTQ affairs of Iloilo City and the uh, Office of the Mayor, of course, of the city government, uh, thanking them for all the efforts that they've been doing in support of the LGBTQA community. And of course, my brothers and sisters in Iloilo Pride Team for having a successful event today. Congratulations, everybody. I love you. Congratulations. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so what we did na lang, like in provinces, nearby provinces, we, we had... Um, local uh what do you call it the laws uh what's the term um uh consulsi what are those uh what did we pass uh within the yes. provinces anti-discrimination yeah. ordinance ordinances Ordinance. yes we did that so we passed ordinances in order to protect the community since the <laughs> soji bill still is being debated for 22 years now um yeah so were you aware of the political impact? Of course you are, no? being a very progressive activist that the film might bring to the community. What were this um, awareness that you want to impart with the community? You know what? Uh, one of the things that I could really be proud of uh, my team, not just myself, uh, is that uh, we, we were quite surprised because we started screening this uh, all over Europe. Unfortunately, we were not able to screen it yet in Germany. Uh, but in other countries in Europe, when we screen it and a lot of Filipino community came in, and a lot of them, after watching the film, they started like creating a, a, a narrative on why should we, uh, why not that we should create the LGBT, Filipino LGBT organization in the film, uh, in, in their respective countries mm -hmm. and i think that's the biggest impact there because we needed a unifying solidarity front to really put pressure not just to the filipino people but also to create an environment environment where 
uh, equality movers in the Philippines would feel not alone, that they have the support of the Filipino LGBT in the diaspora and also our politician because number is power in 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 the in the government and politics in the Philippines. Yeah. So I'm also curious, no, I, I know we have a lot, tons of questions for Consul Cecil Lau here, you know, being sent to us. But I want to hear her per personal perspective as well with the uh, you know the anti-discrimination bill in our country. What's your point of view on this? I mean, equal rights is guaranteed by the Philippine Constitution. So mm -hmm. if a, a law, I think, would be helpful in operationalizing exactly what that means. So that's what we rely on. So, I mean, I think yes. um, this is the correct idea that um, if, you want, uh, if you want to be heard by our politicians that you organize, right? Yeah. You, get, mm -hmm. you stand up and get the, have the numbers counted. Yes, that's true. We need the mindset of Consul Cicillaw on the <laughs> on the seats, the voting seats there in, in the country. So, uh, okay. So, what's what was your biggest challenge in the, in directing Tolipa in creating this beautiful film, Redem? I think one of was the challenge was the pandemic. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, I was filming that like early last year, and mm -hmm. there was a, a lot of like. COVID flight restrictions all <laughs> over the world and yeah. it always changes from time to time uh, so I've been to a lot of flight circles wherein I'm stuck in one country and I cannot fly to the other one even mm -hmm. if I have the visas and all uh, and we have probably I think we have wasted uh, 10,000 euro on, on those entire COVID circles where we could have mm -hmm use that instead for our mm -hmm. film, you know, for our actual filming and the program mm -hmm. that we sort of uh, created in, uh, in, in Europe. So those were the challenge. And of course, at the time, a lot of people don't want to show up because uh, they're afraid of COVID. So it, yeah. it's hard. We are having a hard time to get interviews with the characters. And some of them are, are afraid to for us to enter their house because they have their mothers there who are uh, uh, you know uh, senior citizen. So those are the challenges that really brought COVID, uh, that really brought the film uh, in a way, in a situation we're in, we're like, pa ba natin to? <laughs> but we were able to finish it, uh, uh, inshallah, with the grace of the uh, Almighty Allah, we were able to finish the film and actually the purpose of the film, we we actually intended to do it as a small clips as a uh, voters education program to encourage a lot of uh, voters in, in the Philippines on why they should vote for politicians that would support the uh, uh, comprehensive anti-discrimination bill in, in Congress. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do that uh, in partnership with the Commission on Human Rights and uh, at the same time with the uh, uh, community-based organizations. Then later on, we decided, gawa na lang natin to ng, ng, ng full film. Parang sasayang yung mga footage natin. Uh, so that's why we were able to push and made Tulipa how it become Tulipa as it is. And it also won a mini documentary award uh, presented by uh, Facebook and also Adobo Magazine as well during the before the election campaign. So that's one of the reasons as well. Congratulations! Like, I know, um, uh, it, after yeah. all the crazy flights. Congratulations, Raden. You know, Raden, um, not connected to your film, no, but uh, my friend Hamilcar Shan Wenko Jr. was the founder of Mindanao Pride. I was actually surprised before before I met Hamilcar that, uh, you know, the Pride team is also being created in Mindanao. Uh, it's, you're Muslim, right? Yes. Because I lived in Abu Dhabi for so long as well. And how how is that perspective? I, I thought it was, you know, against your uh, maybe religion or your culture to be a member of the community. Am I, I I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to offend anyone, but I was really curious. I haven't asked even Hamilcar this question, but I want to ask you. So how is it in the perspective of a Muslim? But, you know, I, I always get a lot of uh, questions like this all the time whenever I present 
my my film and also my mm -hmm. equality uh activism in in the Philippines. Uh, I I would always say this: we're in. All religion always promote the idea of love, an idea of loving your neighbor, even if the the Bible, the Quran, and other scripture, the Torah. Uh, mm -hmm. because I studied in Ateneo, so we're like I'm exposed with the Christian Bible as well. Uh, there are a lot of scriptures and a lot of verses in every religious books that can be interpreted as something crazy and not not adhering anymore to the global or the modern needs, you know. And a lot of people would say, oh, uh, why do you still stay being Muslim and still doing your equality movement? You know, I, I would only, I, I always say this, that because my grandfather is a sheikh and also imam, uh, when, when I came out, my grandfather actually told me like, uh, Radem, we live in a different times uh, if you're going to read the Quran, read it through the lens of acceptance and love. Because if you're going to read it explicitly, then it will only break your heart. But if you re will read it through the lens of love and acceptance, you will find yourself there. And I think that's what I'm holding on to. Uh, that narrative of love in the scriptures, in our uh, holy books. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, you know what really hit me in the film is that one of the actors saying that I live here, I live abroad because I cannot live as a woman in the Philippines. So that was really, uh, you know, it had a strong impact on me that the, the freedom, they're not free to be who they are. So um, this question is for Consul Lau again. You know, what do you think are the measures in your perspective, uh, that the Philippine government should consider or support for the LGBTQ immigrants or all of top use. I mean, when we, how do, how, how do you say? I, the, 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 I will just answer from the perspective of the, yes. of the requests we get the most often. Yes. And um, I think what is felt the most is yung sa civil registration, ma'am. Kasi, because the Philippines still does not, uh, our laws still do not um, recognize, mm -hmm. number one, um, sex change um, mm -hmm. surgery as a way of changing your gender, or uh, your sex from male to female or female to ma male or any other mm -hmm. variation in between. So, um, inter it, the, our laws also do not recognize yet same-sex marriages. So it's always a little heartbreaking um, to receive um, queries from our kababayans uh, mm -hmm. about uh, they would like to report their marriage, right? And it's, a, it's such a happy event in anybody's life. Mm -hmm. But we have to let them know that based on Philippine laws, we are not yet able to register that. Um, mm -hmm. because the laws don't allow for it yet. So I think that's probably... So it's not a migrant worker thing per se. It is definitely yeah. a SOGI issue. Um, yes. So ayun, ma'am. Uh, it's, it's something that I think most Filipinos or a lot of Filipinos take for granted. If you are um, cis-hetero, mm -hmm. this is not an issue for you. But yes. something so basic as marrying and celebrating that love, it's not something we can do officially yet for um, this portion of our population. Yeah, so I, know, but, I, mean, I think your answer was thing. very, very important and clear that there are so many Filipinos or Kababayans are really wanting to know the answers of. Yes, Radin? I also add to that, I, I, I also want to uh, echo what uh, uh, Consul Cecil have mentioned. No, uh, I have few friends of mine who uh, 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 went back to the Philippines. They are married in Europe and they went back to, to the Philippines and for some unfortunate reason, they got stuck in the Philippines during the pandemic. And and uh, his husband died and when his husband was sent to the hospital, this is really, uh, really painful for the community because when his husband died and, and, and our Kababayan Filipino was there and he was sort of ano tawag doon hindi siya inalaw ng hospital natin sa Pilipinas to make decision for his husband because they are not mm -hmm. recognized as a couple yes. and, and sabi pa ng hospital sir hindi pwede kasi hindi po kayo pamilya and that's mm -hmm. the most painful part they're being told mm -hmm. by the hospital in the Philippines like 
you cannot make decision for your husband because you are not a family. And I think that's really, really broke my heart during that time. And it, it was hard for me to uh, uh, assist them as well because I was also stuck in my own apartment during COVID. And, and the second part was that when the, when the dead body was sent to the funeral parlor or what you called it, because we have funeral parlor for the Muslims, eh, yung where you put your uh, uh, dead bodies and do the funeral service thing, he was again shoo away by the funeral parlor because he was not considered as a family of the, of the dead person. I was like, how can we be cruel to this kind of moment where in these people were living together for 10 years? I was like, you know, I, there, there's something we could we could do about it because it is very inhuman for these people, for, for them to happen. Yes, that's, those are just a few of the things that, you know, worry LGBT, LGBTQ members. Uh, of course, um, there are cases of adoption as well where they the couple adopt a child and then later on, you know, um, the the rights of the couples are not being given, you know, fully because mm -hmm. it doesn't apply in our country and other and as uh, what Consul Cecil Lau mentioned, because of the laws, we don't have the laws that protect these things for the LGBTQ LGBTQA community in our country. So uh, okay, so Raden. What advice would you give to those people who want to do the things that you do, like being a Muslim, fighting for the rights of the community, fighting human for human rights, which is very dangerous, you know, job for especially for you, for a Muslim person. I I think for those people, especially for the Bangsamoro region, on that they are having a hard time to really come out or or really uh, uh, talk about this issue, I think the easiest way that they could do is probably uh, create a space for their uh, fellow Moro LGBTs, you know, to be themselves, uh, uh, be nicer to them and protect them if something happens. And also at the same time, pressure the Bangsamoro government that at the end of the day, yes, we have this Islamic culture in Bangsamoro, but we should still adhere to the uh, International uh, Declaration of Human Rights no? and the human rights uh, values and ethics that we need to attend, that everyone should coexist and be free to live for who they are. And for, and for my friends from the North, you know, for my Christian friends, they're always afraid to talk about the issues of the Moro people. For some reason, I don't know why, every time we have this uh, movement about LGBT, they always, in a way, unconsciously, do not want to talk about the uh, oppression that is happening to the LGBT people in Bangsamoro. Uh, I think, and, and, and they would always say, tell me that, oh, we don't want to, to overshadow and, and talk about them. They should be the one talking about their issues. The mm -hmm. problem is that we have culture of silence in Bangsamoro. And, and if you have culture of silence there, we need to talk more about them so they would feel welcome and they would feel safe to speak up because the more you, you don't talk about it the more people would refuse to come out and to really fight for uh their coexistence and dignity no and, and i would always say this now in the world there's only two types of people one that watches and one that participates and i'm always hoping that people that i bump into that i was able to talk with or was able to watch my films after watching it i hope that they have chose to participate because if we're just going to watch, then who are we as a community and who are we as a people if we don't fight for those who are left behind? Thank you so much, Radim. And of course, um, for the benefit of everyone, the film Tulipa is a story of Filipino LGBT migrants who sought life outside the Philippines mm -hmm. to assert their rights to gender equality personal experiences, and life stories about survival, hope, and the continuing struggle of the community in the Philippines. Yes. So, Mike, we have received tons of questions for <laughs> Consul Cecile. And let's start with, uh, how are you, Consul I'm Cecile? We know that you have been recently assigned here in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. Are you adjusting well? It's okay. I'm learning German. It's uh, not going very well. Yeah. 
Okay, so welcome to Germany. And the questions that we received, Mike, first. Yes, uh, first question is um, uh, received. Is, uh, is, dual is, yeah, is a dual citizenship allowed for Filipinos in Germany? Um, it's a yes and a no, sir. Mm -hmm. So there are, if you look at our website under consular services, there's an entry for Filipino citizenship. Tapos, mm -hmm. um, and then that section, um, it lists down, there are three cases where um, Germany allows for dual citizenship, which is basically if the if a child is born to parents uh, who are of mixed citizenship, so one German, one Filipino, mm -hmm. then um, the child is allowed to carry dual citizenship. And mm -hmm. then there is also some a, a specific law about parents who uh, for about children who were born in Germany after um, uh, from the from the year two thousand onwards. Um, who upon birth um, had a parent who'd been staying in Germany for longer than eight years um, and the child has grown up in Germany, then they can opt for dual citizenship also. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the next one is uh, children um, who were born, so uh, who were adopted, so by okay. who were naturalized by adoption. So. Filipino child adopted by German parents or one German parent, then that child uh, that child can retain their Philippine citizenship while also gaining German citizenship. But when we're talking about, for example, former Filipinos who naturalized as German citizens, um, Germany generally doesn't allow them to carry more than one citizenship. Um, so it's a similar law as I think in the Netherlands, as we saw in the film, um, for uh, anybody who naturalizes as a German citizen is expected to renounce their former citizenship. And then, um, so ayun, um, it's not easy to regain. There are some instances where um, you can ask German authorities if you can carry multiple citizenships as a naturalized German citizen. And then there's a discussion, I understand. There are certain specific cases. I'm not very familiar with what these cases are where German authorities do allow Filipino, former Filipino citizens to um, carry multiple citizenships is what they call it. Um, okay. And then in, the, in that case, then it, the, the, Filipino, uh, the former Filipino could reacquire their Filipino citizenship without losing their German citizenship. Um, in those cases, po, we always advise the former, the, Filip, the former Filipino citizen to get that permission in writing mm -hmm. it, um, so that if, if they are questioned, then they have proof that they had mm -hmm. pri prior authorization. Because otherwise, po, the risk is very high, right? Um, you could lose your German citizenship, you could mm -hmm. lose the attendant benefits, your your pension could be affected, your residency could be affected, things like that. Po. Okay. So I was about to ask that, you know, the consequences of not denouncing your Philippine passport. You have to denounce it when you turn 18 when you're here in Germany, right? So... If you are a German, if you if you naturalize as a German citizen, yeah, you have to denounce it, and then when you don't, so those are the consequences that you mentioned. Um, it's up to the German authorities, ma'am. Um, I've never I've never encountered a case like that yet where they did not complete the yeah. renunciation mm -hmm. process. Yeah, uh, because I well I know a few who still use their Philippine passport when they go back home. I mean, it's uh, beneficial to them, especially in terms of education, because when you were yet in CPU, you have to apply as an international student. Yes, correct. So, so, so back home, yeah. you have to apply. There's so many paperwork when you become an international student. Unlike those, we have friends like the Filipino Americans who have this dual passport, so they can just enroll themselves as mm. Filipinos. So those are there's. There's no consequences here in Germany when they do that, like when they use still their Philippine passport and now denouncing it because you have to go to the Philippine embassy, right, and denounce and give it back. Yes, we call it renunciation, ma'am. Renunciation yeah. of Philippine citizenship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what happens if they if they don't do it for um, students? Let's say. Ma'am, it depends kasi kung ano yung case nila eh. If they were born to fill, uh, they were born fill German, one Filipino parent, one German parent. It's not an issue. They don't have to renounce it. Mm -hmm. cool. So, 
if um, they were born Filipino to Filipino parents that did not qualify under any of the other um, situations where dual citizenship is allowed, and then the parents became nat- uh, naturalized as German citizens, dinala po yung, um, yung ba- mga bata, then mm-hmm. they're expected to complete the process, the renunciation process after they turn 18, to complete mm-hmm. their naturalization as German citizens. Um, what happens if they don't do it will depend on German authorities po, ma'am. Okay. So, so, yeah. So, I That's think, so, been... I think has a question, ma'am. Yeah, what? Ah, yeah, Raden? Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, uh, for uh, Consul Cecil, uh, my, my, my question now, kasi uh, there were some uh, communities kasi in Copenhagen, no, na I told them why don't why don't they you know uh, uh, avail the benefits of having dual citizenship, and these are the communities uh mga trans communities mga trans man na formerly female then na convert na yung lahat ng papers nila in in, in into male yung gender mar- marker nila na change na in, into male and na change na yung name niya. Tapos sabi nila when they approached though, the embassy, it was hard because the embassy is insisted to use their identity from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Toto, uh, I mean, regrettably, that is still the case now. Because if they reacquire um, their Filipino citizenship, then they would be treated as Filipino citizens. And uh, as I mentioned previously, the, our laws still do not allow for sex change. They don't recognize sex change surgery. They don't recognize... Um, same-sex marriages. So um, the, the paperwork that would apply would be the paperwork for a Filipino citizen. Uh, citizen. So if you have a, Filipi- uh, a former Filipino citizen who, then had, who, had, who, who was male previously, then became female um, while she, he, while she uh, was a, a Dutch citizen, um, pag, nag- nag- revert, uh, pag niregain niya po yung Filipino citizenship niya, um, the rules we would be required to follow would be for that with that with that person's uh, when the person's identity ang ang treatment po namin lalaki pa rin po siya so that's another way where it's hurtful for yung mga kababayan LGBTQI di ba na it's not the same treatment for others so they don't get what they want they don't get that official recognition so currently that is still the situation po uh, yeah. Last na lang, Consul uh, Cecil, uh, para lang hindi ko makalimutan kasi nagsa sign of aging ako, so I usually forget things. <laughs> uh, um, I just want to know your thought po. Uh, this is not in reflection to uh, all diplomatic offices of the Philippines around the world, no? But what are your thoughts about some certain Philippine embassy, let's say one in Europe, uh, Every time I reach out to them and talk about gender and development program, because I always partner with embassy and we do like uh, like SOGI awareness and workshop and whatsoever, um, most of the time they uh, they close the door to me and for some reason I notice that their program on their gender program are only focused like targeted on women. Uh, how how does embassies play with this? Are are you are the ambassador decides what type of gender program that you need to do or implement in your offices, let's say, for example, in Germany, or it needs to be like a general gender program and it needs to be like all the different topic or you, you or some embassies has, has, uh, has the prerogative to only focus on women's program for their GAD. I mean, I can only speak for the offices I've been in. So, um, because practices can vary a lot, um, but there there are certain activities we do because it's in line with um, a national program. So, if it's Women's Month, then it's Women's Month. Um, and then if, uh, but there are also certain programs that we can tweak to respond to the needs of the specific community we're serving. So, if um, the need in a local community is for, as you said, as you mentioned, on SOGI issues, it could be accommodated po. Okay. So, thank you, Redem, and thank you, Consul Cecil Lau. Of course, we have still a lot of questions. Actually, 
mag-blow up up na yung ano namin yung box dito. So anyway, <laughs> since what we can, we have limited time also. If if you want to know these answers, please also visit the Philippine Consulate General website and they also have a Facebook page. So please visit for more information. Now guys, before we end our talk, let us ask you a few questions that has nothing to do with your work. Yes, there are some fun <laughs> questions. So they are um, aside your work. And uh, we'll start with the first question uh, for you. Um, if you were a flavor, what would you be and why? Ladies first. Ladies Oh, okay. I don't know, ma'am. Probably <laughs> I'm a little tart. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I thought you were going to say ube because we're promoting it right now. <laughs> you know, I do it for work, but please book the after work. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Redem? Uh, this is very much because I, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'm a fruit salad baby. That's uh, my favorite <laughs> since then when I was young. Uh, everything that is mixed all together, halo halo fruit salad. For some odd reason, I really find it so delicious. But some of my friends uh, abroad was like, Brandon, that's just a mixture of everything. How would you identify the flavor? I was like, hmm, I don't know. I know. I love halo halo also. Mm. Do you? Yes, halo yes, is delicious. Do, right? At first, it was, oh, yeah. But later on, it's really nice. I love it. So, second question. If you have a superpower, what would it be? Radem, first. Uh, oh, wait. The impromptu. To, wait lang. <laughs> yeah. Very, very unusual questions from all the interviews that I get. Uh, superpower. Parang masyado tong cliche. Parang masyado <laughs> Miss Universe. World peace. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Consul Cecile? Um, I guess my talent is I uh, know how do you, how do you say it? I'm helpful in facilitating understanding, right? When two people are talking, one is asking, the other one is answering, and they don't seem to be understanding each other. Parang I'm good at figuring out where the issue is. Mm -hmm. and trying to facilitate that discussion. So they both arrive at the answer that they that that is your superpower is that, that that's a <laughs> good superpower know, actually being a good mediator is really good people, yeah yeah you know yeah the super right. supporter oh right oh, she, mom, how about the calling minds lang para they do what you want to do <laughs> a dictator and you know, the joke <laughs> anyway next third question. question if you were given a chance to speak to anyone living or dead who would it be Consul Cecil. <laughs> I don't know. Sino? Okay, no. <laughs> Sino kaya? Sige, we'll do with the, with the traditional diplomat answer. Probably po si Jose Rizal. Let's see. I, 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 I want to know what he thinks about the state our country is in versus what he envisioned. <laughs> He won't like it. <laughs> so, so, oh my God, all this uh, no sacrifices for this to happen in the future. How about you, Redem? Uh, I think I would want, if I would be given the chance, I would want to talk and hopefully try to negotiate and also try to convince uh general baits, you know, to stop the genocide of the Moro people in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. And probably, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big supporter of the history of, of Bangsamoro. I, I had the film that talks about the Sulu Sultanates and how we are the power hub way back 700 or 800 years ago. And now look what is Sulu has become. It becomes ashes of nothing and hopefully we could bring that glory glory back in the near future and yeah we just won the french international tribunal court on the north saba but i know we're not going to get it <laughs> but at least we will get compensated from it <laughs> <laughs> yes at least the, the families will benefit from what happened before Okay, so final question. The final question. Ito talaga grabe. No one is exempted. Ah. Yes. Isipin oh, nyo God. yung mga photos ng lahat ng in-interview namin. Uh, kahit na sina 
attorney who was at uh, anyway, I forget. He ran for Senate. Lahat sila hindi exempted. So, if you were to describe your life in a song right now, what song would it be? And you, you have, have to, to sing, sing it. it. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, who wants to go first? Consul is first. first. You go because kita sa tang music. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I don't even know. As we've said before, everyone really answered this question. Uh, everyone. I have to Google this. <laughs> Consul Cecil, the stage is yours. What would be the song of your life? And you have to sing it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I don't know. I don't have a song. Song? <laughs> the Google oh, big world that. after all. <laughs> okay. So what song represents your life right now? How about you, Mike? What song represents your life right now? Well, it's Sunday. I think it's um, Sunday morning, I guess, uh, for now. Sunday morning. Good on. That, yep. that song. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Sing a line. Or the lazy song. Oh. <laughs> I'm more of uh, in tunes. I know you're a dancer. <laughs> Glenn Villacuatro. Engineer Villacuatro, remember. Mm. I need that video of Mike. So, Consul Cecile, what's the song? Mom, you know that old Disney song? You, It's a small world. Oh. It, it's a world of laughter, a world of. Oh, I love it's a that. World of Folks, it's a world of fears. There's so There's much. There's so much that we share. Sure. It's a small world after all. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I think I sang that in preschool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be where my life is at right now. Ooh, small world, ba? Big na eh. How about you, Radem? Uh, I think I'll go with one of us because i think we live in a world where in a lot of people use religion to justify violence and i i i think if if we could have uh our our god sitting on us in the bus what would he see what would he say now on what's happening in the world instead of uniting we are dividing so the song will be uh, what if god was one of us oh, just yeah. a stranger on the bus, trying to get his way yeah, home. Was... Thank yeah. you. I like that. love that song. Yes, all of us are strangers on our way home. See, si Consul says, <laughs> yes, I want to go home. <laughs> 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 Nakaka-relate talaga siya. Uh, before we leave nga pala, Radem, there's a question here. Uh, will the film also be shown in the Philippines? I think it, it was shown uh, last June. He had a Philippine premiere, but yung yung capacity kasi was only a hundred. So yung invited guests lang are all uh, diplomatic agencies, including the DFA and the EU and stuff. It was a strategy for me because we I wanted to put more international pressure to the Philippine government to really pass the Soji bill. But I had the second screening, which was in UP Cine Adarna Theater last. Mm-hmm. Last October 26, so that was our general public screening, uh, and and the capacity I think was 200, and it was good. So for hopefully we will be able to get more screening in the Philippines. Yes. But you, you know, naman the in the Philippines we we don't have documentary film culture and people and people in the Philippines because of poverty and challenges in life, they that's want true. feel good movies, they want rom com comedy, Not and all. that's un- understandable because we have yeah. so much and issue so- there. Films naman are rising in the, mm. in the country. And um, we'll just wait for the platform where you can, sh- online platform where you can show the film. And we, you know, the, where you pay, we can pay and watch a film. There are oh, I'm in talk with Amazon that. Prime, so fingers crossed. Yeah, Ooh. hopefully we can have that also. Nice. And we'll just, you know, we can support more of the things that you do in the future. So we can just watch it online. And they could also course, follow for updates my Instagram, Radem yes, Definitely. We will follow you. And thank you, both of you, for being with yes. us. Thank you, Consul Cecil Lau, for accommodating all the questions, for giving us your time. I know you're so busy, and this is, you know, Sunday. It's time for you to rest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank we you, love too, you so much thank for your time. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, Mike and Maria, can I uh, give like a last parting words? Of Because course. I just I just remember yesterday I was being questioned by 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 somebody that I'm a person of privilege, so I should not be sort of like uh, uh doing all these works that I do. But you know, I I always I I I I I answer that person is that privilege is not a dirty word. It's only dirty. It depends on how we use it. So if we're going to use it for the benefit of others, that will define us our, as a good Filipino and a good human being. So I think that's the special part. If you have the privilege, share it. So you know, right. thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations both. And uh, we wish you all the best. You, Council Cecil Lau, here in Frankfurt. Good luck mm -hmm. and all the best. So you will see, see you, Council Cecil. I'll be there in Germany <laughs> soon. <laughs> Good luck okay. to everything that you do. Bye. Okay, bye. See you. See you guys. Bye. bye. Okay. So yes. that was really a wonderful, um, you know, uh, episode. Mm -hmm. I love uh, the things that Radem discussed, especially with my uh, my community, mm -hmm. the Filipino and no, the LGBTQ community all over the world. Of course, the OFWs. Mm -hmm. Um, LGBTQ, LGBTQ. I'm always my tongue is always, you yeah, know, today twisted. You're... I know. I'm so about today. I don't know what happened. Anyway, for the LGBTQA community here in abroad, I know you are really struggling. We feel you and we hear you, and we hope that the laws of our country will change for so that everyone, you know. Because the law is equal dapat, eh, mm. to all. Yes. To all people, to all human beings, to all citizens. So, you know, um, don't you think that um, these things is not equal? The things that they need and the things that they want to live uh, as who they are is not equal. Does not define the law that you were trying to, you know, to give the citizens. Say yun dapat, di ba? Equal rights for all. Mm -hmm. And this is not equal if they feel that they are being discriminated, they feel that they are preju being prejudiced by their own country and their own fellow men. So hopefully po sana, after 22 years, uh, the SOGI law will finally be approved. And, you know, they're still discussing it. We really need new blood of um, lawmakers in the country. Those who are minds are open to this kind of things. Yes. Yeah, right, Mike? That's true, yeah. So, so uh, thank you for the listeners and viewers for staying with us uh, on this episode yes. uh, of Talk Ali. Yeah. Um, wishing you a, a happy and uh, rest Sunday. Yeah, wishing you rest a Sunday. happy Sunday and, of course, Monday tomorrow. So, yes. Good wake start up, the next rise, week. and go to work. <laughs> yes. This is Mike. And this is Maria. And this is Talk Ali. Bye, Bye. everyone.